Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see everyone here. It looks like we've got a little room, too, in the back because they're still coming in the doors. <laughs> Beautiful. Welcome. We're just getting ready to start here. Welcome. Hi. Um, was. There's some pillows up here. We need another chair. And there's a chair in the back against the back wall. And over there, yeah. There's still chairs. We still have some people here. That's kind of a. Maybe we can use it up front, Gia, because there's no. In case somebody comes in here and really needs to squeeze, then yeah. 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 Are you happy? Well, thank you all for coming, and thank you, Don, for. Offering your space on such short notice, 48 hours. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tonight we're going to have a, we'll have a setup which will be really a deep, uh, really a, a healing opportunity to go very deep within and really see the opportunity for healing in your mind. And then we'll show the movie, Take Me Home Tonight, uh, which is an hour and 20 minutes. And then we'll leave about 40, 45 minutes for Q&A at the end. To, and we'll try to really be prompt and get you out of here by 9.30 because we know how it is in Northern California with traffic and everything. It helps to know uh, your entry points and your exit points when you're doing those things. Well... We want to give you a bit of a context for the movie, but we also want to give you a context for healing, using A Course in Miracles, and how we live our life. And I think as we enter into tonight, the first thing we want to do is you've come from your busy days. Uh, Slava has her guitar, and she's going to play a couple songs, a couple beautiful songs, just to bring us all into that harmony and receptivity that we need tonight for mm -hmm. our, our gatherings. So, Svava, mm -hmm. take it away. Thank 
Thank you, thank you, Sava. Mm. Well, when Francis um, re literally received this movie and uh, put this movie together through uh, intuitive guidance, uh, it was it was an example of the fruits of the spirit when you give over all expectations, all control, all attempts to figure it out, do something from past learning. And Francis has had 
some experiences throughout her life of of having this really strong intuitive feeling about whether she, uh, being born and raised in Beijing, China, uh, going to Australia, living there for was it five years, six, seven years, and then a strong feeling to come to the United States and. Uh, while she was in Australia, she met a, a very uh, well-known documentary filmmaker, and then she had like a dream with with a, a vision of making a movie. And maybe we can start out tonight because it's we can start at that level of you, what you heard uh, years ago about this movie. Um, yeah, I can give a little background. I. Um, that was uh, at a point where I actually already came to the United States and lived in the Living Miracles Monastery for three months. That's the maximum amount I could stay in the United States. And I finished my time, went back to to Australia, and I had this dream that woke me up with enormous amount of joy it was very clear that I am to make a documentary movie to carry out this hope of what I have received the previous three months so that was way back that was 2011 um, and I remember that was a very vivid dream and very it, it more than the the details was the feeling that was so beyond this world. And I remember the, the message that came to me was to carry out the hope, to share the hope that you have experienced. So, so what happened after that was I went, I, I wrote to David, and David said, you're, you're welcome to come back and uh, we'll put the media team together, we can make a movie and at that point we had no camera or microphone and so that, I went back and we had this started from buying little camcorders to learn how to shoot YouTube videos and improve the sound system and then gradually this, this idea of the movie just started to take a back seat because, because we live in the monastery day in and day out working on all kinds of projects and media projects, physical projects, um, publication and it d became irrelevant what the form is because I think it became clear to me that the purpose of all the projects is to learn how to purify, purify the ego thoughts and learn to listen and follow through those projects. So that is, has been a very long phase of, of listen and follow. And 2017, all of a sudden, all the synchronicities happened and people show up um, and we were going to have a mystery school in May for the whole month of May in the Living Miracles Monastery in Utah. And I don't even know how much I got into it. It was a strong sign that this movie is happening during that month. And also very clear that I, w I was to be the director for the movie and it was quite daunting because I, I don't know how to be a director. I thought I was going to be a cheerleader for this project. And, and then not until about 10 days before the team was arriving, I realized if we don't make the move to, to, to start to buy hard drives and run cameras, we wouldn't be able to start. That's where I started to take it on. And... For me, this whole journey of being the director was a whole phase of really practicing what I have learned for the past seven years. Is that seven years? To receive very specific guidance from the spirit 
and trust that, deliver that, and follow through, no matter how counterintuitive that is, no matter what, and lead a whole team of 10 people to do just that. So that was a brief version of the, the context, yeah. Yeah, and so what the movie really has the capability of doing is showing you the inner workings of, of healing. When we think of healing, when we even use the word healing, some of you may think of like physical healing, removal of symptoms. We may think of, uh, of psychological healing because the human condition, there's so much hurt and grievance. There's the jealousies, the envies, all those experiences that human beings experience that aren't peaceful and happy and joyful. There's a lot of, of dark, fearful emotions. There's guilt, there's shame. Uh, and you might say, just as a as an as a in initial definition, is that uh, is healing is really removing all the blocks to love, all the blocks to source or to God. And oftentimes, healing is very mysterious. Uh, sometimes people have have. Uh, moments of glimpses of, of how glorious life can be. Other times it seems like there are illnesses and psychological difficulties that go on and last for years and years, sometimes even decades. And so Francis mentioned the Living Miracles Monastery. Some of you have been there. It's uh, in rural Utah. And this is not like traditional monasteries because traditional monasteries have have vows. You take vows perhaps of like poverty, chastity, obedience. Uh, convents and monasteries are known for lots of rituals, dressing very simply, living very sparsely. Uh, sometimes they're working farms or they're, they're, there's monasteries and convents sprinkled all over the universe. We have Buddhist monasteries, we have Christian monasteries, so on and so forth. This Living Miracles Monastery, which is really the backdrop for the movie that you'll be seeing, uh, there are no vows. You don't take any vows. You just follow two guidelines. No people-pleasing and no private thoughts. Those are the two guidelines for healing. No people-pleasing and no private thoughts. Because private thoughts are secrets. And what are secrets? except pushing something down into your mind and holding on to something that you're afraid to share with someone else. You fear there could be a consequence of sharing something. And that eats away that unconscious desire to protect and hide and submerge and repress and deny. That is a block to healing, to true healing. Whether you talk about removal of symptoms or even spiritual healing, psychological healing. And then private thoughts are thoughts that you would just keep for yourself alone. And God, we have learned, is, is a God of sharing. Why is it that we love, we feel this nurturing warmth rise in our hearts when we share? Why is it when we watch stories on the news or we watch movies where there's sh sharing where our hearts are so warmed because it's not a sense of trying to keep everything for ourselves. It's a sense in giving and extending and sharing. So those are the two guidelines and then also the context of Francis mentioned a mystery school. Uh, there have only been two mystery schools at the Living Miracles Monastery. One in 2017 in May and then one in September of 2018. The name of the mystery school was Tabula Rasa Mystery School. Tabula Rasa, blank slate. Coming to the pristine, quiet, still mind that is a mind that, that is without judgment. And really if you boil the teachings of Jesus down and the Beatitudes and everything down to two words, you could really summarize the teachings of Jesus as judge not. That judgment is where the illness comes in. God does not judge, and God didn't create us to be judges. And yet, this is a world of judgment, and that's why there's, it's a world of conflict and war 
sickness and all of the, the, the jealousies, the envies, and all the difficult emotions that come that are really versions of fear. So what this movie is tonight, it will give you a glimpse as if you are there at the mystery school. So you get to look at the facial expressions, not only of the characters and the participants, but of the film crew and of the animals. There are a lot of animals that live very playful lives out there. There are cows and squirrels and and chipmunks and hummingbirds and they're the backdrop also for this healing. They're playing. They're out there just having a great time. Uh, the cows are quite calm. The, the hummingbirds are, are, are in a state of grace. The, the chipmunks are full on play and then the, the human beings are going through a lot of emotions. When you come together for 30 days and you don't have a lot of distractions, you just have your mind and your thoughts, then those emotions come to the surface in, in a setting where there's lots of love, lots of safety, and lots of integrity. In my experiences at the monastery, I've watched, I mean, chipmunks come up, come up They'll eat out of my hand, they crawl on my legs. I had a friend, Sue, she was wearing a hat one time. The chipmunk went all, all the way to the top and sat on a hat on top of her head. Very relaxed, because why? Because there's a sense of gentleness, like St. Francis, a sense of safety, a sense of there's no harm here. Uh, they're not running away from the people, they're actually eye-gazing. I've had some amazing eye-gazing experiences with deer. They come up on the lawn and we just look into each other's eyes and do a little meditation. But there's not a sense of fear. And Francis and I were talking earlier, uh, when, when I think Sundari had been talking recently with Francis at Sundari's house, and Sundari is saying, can you, can you summarize this pathway? And, and, and Francis basically said, oh, I think the love and the safety is what heals. Uh, we're used to lots and lots of techniques when we talk about healing. Different variations of meditation and many techniques. But I think all of us know that if you're going through an emotional struggle and you can talk to a close friend or a dear friend who loves you and accepts you and no matter what you tell them they're just going to, to just smile and, and love you and hold you and hug you and do whatever you need to move through that emotion. And that's what I think Francis meant by, it's the love and the safety that heals. So a mystery school is a 30-day residential uh, opportunity for healing where, where the participants who came, came from all over the world. I think uh, this last mystery school we did, I think half of them were from Europe. But they come from all over the world and they take out a month out of their life to give themselves over to the spirit to go through a healing process. And sometimes people are aware of some of their blocks and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the blocks are unconscious. You don't, if you knew exactly what they were, it might be a little bit easier to kind of zoom in on the healing of them. But a lot of times these blocks just spring out like, like a little monster in the mind and it, it's surprising. It's, it's actually shocking sometimes because you say, I didn't realize I was that attached to that or that I had such an investment in something until a circumstance or a situation comes along and allows this, this pattern or this, this uh, dark uh, block to come up into awareness. So these participants came to the monastery, you'll get to see that, and also, uh, as you know, with making a movie, a documentary, you have to have release forms. 
you have you can't just film everybody uh, in their darkest hours and go and and enter film festivals and take it around the world and say, oh yeah, here's what the people went through. You have to have release forms, and so Francis. When the, when the group came and, and they presented all these release forms, uh, I think a lot of them signed the release forms, but some were like, are you kidding? It's enough for me to come here for 30 days and bare my soul, but I'm not going to sign a release form you filming up my nose when I'm going through my, my darkest times. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. And then even the movie itself, who would who would be part of it, it turns out that the film crew itself, Frances and her film crew, were a huge part of who would be filmed and who would be in this movie. Yeah, we have to turn the camera to the ones behind the camera because that's where all the discussions happen and we have all the equipment ready, ready to film the sound was set up so when the emotions got stirred up because we 10 of us work together led by someone who absolutely had no idea no knowledge no past experience and we have two people on the team who were experienced filmmakers and the rest weren't so then when things are done in a in a way that's completely opposite to what is the norm and the standard, then there is also there is also this um, emotion that comes up when you're being instructed and told what to do. Even though we had a very crucial agreement before everybody arrived, including the film team and the kitchen team, the volunteers, everybody, we came together for a real project, but the purpose is healing. And that was the only reason we could actually finish, because we encountered so many times when the purpose, you know, there was a temptation to do things for efficiency, to do things for outcome, to do things for uh, this will work, and not for healing. And when the, when the purpose is healing, then everything else is out of the window. What heals? And it, it takes a lot of um, surrendering to to really say we're, we're here for healing and mean it. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's a project like this and when you, have, you, you seem to have to, to, to get things done. And I, I feel like this this whole journey just showed me, and I really want to share with you as well, that once we sincerely say that we want healing, then the healing would happen for us. The spirit orchestrated, we, we seem to lose control of what will unfold. You know, certain self-concepts secures construct that we held on to and we felt safe with. Uh, we know we're loved because of that. Uh, we get approval from because of that. All of those things started to fall apart. And we have no control over that. And yet these things are orchestrated by the spirit according to our own prayer of the heart to open open our mind up to a bigger a bigger reality and then it's up to us when these kind of things happen you know how to trust and how to still go toward the ones that spirit sent to us because it is in that deep connection that that spirit enters to heal the heart if we dare to keep the hearts open and mind open and allow us to move forward with the guidance. And that's what I see how happens. It, it's really not up to us to direct what problem would show up or what emotion would show up. It's, it's all according to a very beautiful divine plan that, that you can see on the screen because we also uh, started the project with no agenda whatsoever. 
I didn't know what to film. What's the theme of this movie? Is that about David? Is not about David? Is about who? What is the message? I had no idea. So literally, there was no grand plan that you can you can see. This is the end result, and I'm going to go toward that result. Really, what happened was day by day, sitting the trust and receive. This is for today. Set the camera here. Do that. Do this. And that's that's really all that it takes. And it's a great lesson, even in in this healing journey in general. Sometimes we want a grand plan, like what is what is that your plan for me? But if we can really trust and relax in this, right now it's pretty clear, it's pretty obvious. You know. Yeah. What's interesting too is a lot of times when we think of healing. Uh, and we think of the traditional means of healing. Oftentimes, uh, spiritual healing is associated with meditation. Meditation takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of persistence. It takes determination. It can take years. It can take decades. It is possible. You can ask those who meditate on a regular basis. They may say they have meditated for a lifetime, and they have seen some benefits. But it's not something that's like Kool Aid, where you just add water, and you do your meditation. And say, okay, I'm enlightened. That was a nice still. I stilled my mind there in uh, in 20 minutes, and now I'm going to live a beautiful, still, quiet life. They they know it takes an effort, and a lot of rituals are involved in traditional monasteries and so forth. But but with the the path that we use of A Course in Miracles, it's a, it's a course that uses relationships. And so we associate the healing as coming in the context of relationships. We know that there's certain conditions that we can come to in our mind where we can feel a connection, a deep connection among everyone. And that is certainly a goal in the, the monastery and the community, is to come to a sense of agape, unconditional love. And what we have found is when you allow this purpose to be up front, the purpose of healing, then the unconscious mind will come up. The expectations, the fears, the doubts, the regrets of the past, the memories that won't go away, the the shame of things that were done years ago, the, the guilt around things that, oh, I should have done this, I, I let so-and-so down, I, I keep reliving this scene over and over. And also the anxieties and worries of the future. Uh, how will I be provided for? Where is my life going? Uh, I would say to most human beings and in society, we could say that there's certain categories that are very common, that you find on most application forms. Single, married. Well, in Frances, in her film crew, she has two people that are on the film crew that are attracted to an, one another, at least they were uh, uh, initially, but engaged. They are engaged to be married and as we all know, engaged to be married is a very interesting situation. Uh, you've heard the thing about cold feet and everything. When, you, when you're about to make a commitment, a marriage commitment, in the context of a mystery school or in the context of healing, and you have to face all those things that are coming up, those fears of commitment can come up very strong uh, in the days and weeks before a marriage. Um, also, there can be all kinds of ego temptations of uh, distractions, attractions, uh, really communication issues. That's why a lot of times when they get married, people say, go to your minister and have some weeks of training with your minister before you get married so you can really see if you really want to get married. <laughs> you know, talk to a third party before you jump right in and then have a huge reaction. You know, there's things like that. 
We also have things in this movie where in working with healing, spiritual healing, we realize that as long as you have expectations in your mind that the world needs to be a certain way for you to be happy, you are going to have a very difficult time being happy because it just seems like things just don't always go the way your expectations, the ego expectations say they should go. And when they don't go that way, it can be a scene. It can be a big scene. I was recently talking to somebody and they were talking about attack thoughts, grievances, attack thoughts in the mind. And if you summarize attack thoughts, it's an attack thought is when any time you wish things are different than they are. How's that for a broad definition of attack thoughts? Any time you wish anything of this world to be different than it is, notice that you're not happy. Notice how you feel constricted. How, how that thing in your mind starts to go, well, I never in all my years thought I would see that. Or did you see that look? Did you hear what they... I heard what they said under their breath. I heard what they said under their breath. Don't think I'm just going to walk away and be the, be the Buddha on this one. You know, I heard what... You know, these unconscious thoughts are expectations, are beliefs that the world should be a certain way. And when that world isn't the way that the ego wants them to be, then the ego is going to throw all of its negative emotions and judge against the world and say, the world should change for me to be happy. And now we have this spirit telling us, no, if you change your mind, if you let go of these false ego beliefs, these false ego self-concepts and images that you're clinging to, then you'll be happy. You'll be egoless if you forgive, like Jesus had taught, if you forgive. So this movie and this mystery school is really aimed at one purpose. And it's really pretty unusual when you get like what is it, like 30, 35 people or so all there with the purpose of releasing the ego. If you come together with the purpose of releasing the ego, do you think the ego is going to come up? Oh yeah. It's, it's not going to, oh yeah, you think you're just going to release me? Well, it's going to come up and it's going to come up in like a fireworks show. What's beautiful about the movie too is that Frances and her team shot 300 hours of footage. And you know, when you have to take 300 hours down to a, a one hour and 20 minute movie, that's, that's like... Uh, Maybe like Mozart getting his concerto in one instant and then he's got to get the pen and start scribbling it out to get it out there and put it into something that people can really hear and appreciate. Francis, who had never made a movie before, who has such a strong desire for healing and who's actually more interested in the harmonious relationships of, of her team and, and everyone there than she is about even getting the movie made. Oh yeah, we'll shoot a lot of footage and it'll eventually turn into something. And she had to ride that horse too for quite a while. Two, two and a half years she had to ride the horse of having all this footage and, and then the ego would come up and say, no, make this movie. Or she would get feedback. Oh, you know what you should do? You should do this, you should do this. Who's your audience? Well, if you're going to do it for this audience, you should do this. And you got to tell the story this way. And Well, you can't just do that. They, nobody will understand it if you do that. What, are you going to have an audience of five people? You know, you, how are you going to... You see, for a filmmaker, if you have other goals other than your own peace of mind and your own healing, then even something like making a movie will be a difficult, conflictual task. Because if you're set on an outcome in form, then that will sway you. It will, it will put pressure on you. It will add stress to your mind to try to shape and bend even the movie. How does Da Vinci do it? How do all the, Frank Lloyd Wright, how do all the great painters and artists and architects throughout history 
with Vincent van Gogh's. How did Vincent make those paintings with those colors except by tuning in to something that's beyond this world and saying, I'm just an instrument. You have your way. And we know how it sounds. We know how it looks and we know how it sounds when, when the grace of God comes through. And that was the goal for this film, that, that Francis basically had to pray and pray and instead of trying to become a filmmaker, I know initially you, you googled <coughs> What does a director <laughs> on Google, what does a director do? And then it, it evolved all the way from that into just the prayer of the heart where it could only come through when you were totally surrendered. And another thing is, is there's a lot of backstories with this movie in even getting the movie made because it involves, you know, not only filming and editing and all the cameras and the camera work, the cinematography. You know, some of those big movies when you watch Titanic and they have the credits at the end that go on for, for five minutes. <laughs> you know, all those. There's a lot that goes into it. And for Frances, also, she had a budget. She had to hire people, uh, professional people, colorization, all the things that go into the making of a movie but still, the only purpose for the movie was for healing. And I think you're going to feel that tonight. When you watch this movie, you're going to feel through every frame of this movie that the purpose and the intention is only for healing. It's not for anything other than healing. We actually uh, showed this at the monastery and it was so precious that we had this movie that we thought, well, We've got a, a four-day retreat here. Why don't we spend a whole day doing what I'm doing now, what Francis is doing, a whole day setting the movie up, a whole day devoted to a concert from, <laughs> from Svava, so everybody's all loose and gooey and in the love right before they watch the movie, w with talking, preparing, giving the context because it's not so much, the, the movie isn't a product, the movie is just an instrument that the spirit can use for the mind that wants to heal. And to me, that's the preciousness of it. So we had a full day of context, morning and afternoon, then the concert for 25 minutes, and then as soon as the movie started, the tears started rolling, 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 and then Everyone went to sleep, and then the next day, interactions with the cast across the ocean and, and the ones that were there live and present. And it turned into probably at least a couple days of, of very, very deep healing. And so you can see that it's different than just looking at something as if you're seeing it as a movie. If you start to really see this as part of your mind, you can tap in to the same emotions and the same healing power that, of course, all of us have. It's not to be found in special people, in special places. We don't need special scriptures. We don't need special techniques. We don't even need special words. We just need a willingness to say to God, to Spirit, I would hide nothing from you. Please help me heal my mind. Help me clear my mind. Teach me how to live free of judgment. And teach me how to follow the divine guidance that I know is my inheritance and I know can, can heal me. So to me, this is, this is what this is all really about. And that's why we're doing these kind of small group gatherings in the sense that uh, the Spirit has guided us to, to come and within 48 hours, it, uh, it was amazing. Don opened up this space for us and it was very, uh, very quick, very spontaneous that we can even have this opportunity together. Yeah, it's, I feel like 48 hours ago we decided to do this and somehow you all heard about it. I don't even know <laughs> how you heard about it. Is the spirit is at work here, so you're not here by accident. Yeah, so, yeah, let's, let's just sit back and relax and just allow your mind to 
to enjoy a ride. Um, I'm gonna close this curtain before we start. Healing is always available. We just have to allow it. We just have to allow it to come into awareness. There's so many backstories that are just continually unfolding. I think of uh, Acacia, who didn't speak any English except we did hear him say, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> he's a like he's the award-winning cinematographer that came all the way from Portugal, and that was his son that was sitting next to him translating. And uh, you might—he's good friends with Luc Besson, who did uh, Lucy, and his, yeah, he's an amazing uh, man. But while I was watching it too, I was reminded that. Um, how we came to know Acasio and, and his son Rafael was, I was over in Spain and I got this message that there was a, a young man in Portugal who was terrified and his parents were all terrified because he was losing all of his five senses. He, he seemed to be not be able to see, he seemed to be going blind, he couldn't he couldn't hear, he was losing his five senses and his parents, Acasio and, and Raphael's mother contacted me and just said, we don't know what to do. We are terrified we're going to lose our son and we think he's dying, but we don't, this is not a typical thing, you know, you go, go to the doctor, I'm losing my five senses, you know, it's not a common thing, losing all the senses, but I talked uh, with Kirsten and we prayed and, and Jenny and a few of us in the community and I, I felt like, um, well, just send him over to the monastery and, and uh, 
he did come to the monastery and he felt so much love and so much safety and so much stillness at the monastery that he slowly began to listen to sounds and and start to see clearly again and he was nurtured back. The fear was underneath the seeming loss and he just nurtured his way back. He was there for I think about six months as long as he could stay in the United States from Portugal and and for this movie Acasio came in and Raphael and then we also had the, the woman with the orange on that saw snow for the first time she was from Portugal we, we needed he was such an amazing cinematographer we had to bring in his son and, and I caught, we communicated with Teresa can you come over and translate and the spirit just brought in the everything that was necessary but it was all for the healing even the initial contacts were all from the healing that's how everybody made it into this movie yeah we received um an application for the mystery school uh, from Raphael so we contacted him and uh, saying so you you want to come to mystery school and he said yeah yeah and um and we said well actually we are going to probably have a movie project going at the same time he said i'll ask my father whether he wants to come cuz he is so busy but he somehow has uh, actually heard to keep the whole month of may free for some silent time so he asked his father and his father said yes i would come and do it completely just for my own um inner healing and they they were scheduled to come then we realized the one who applied was another Raphael we called the wrong person <laughs> but that was that's how this whole thing <laughs> came about the only way it works is we're so clueless uh, we we think we have a an inkling of what we're doing and we don't and and yet the spirit is so gracious behind everything like i got it like you just show up and keep exposing your thoughts exposing your beliefs work in the forgiveness you just do that part and i'll take care of the movie i'll make a movie for you even if you've never made a movie before even if you don't have cameras equipment Jesus like the Holy Spirit took you shopping <laughs> sent in the right people sent in everything that was necessary and I think that's kind of a lesson for all of us imagine if we just focused on our healing if we didn't get too caught up in all the specifics of where is this going to head and what's what am I going to do in the future and how am I going to make it if we really just allowed ourselves to let those emotions up to really focus on the healing and the forgiveness and that's really a trademark that's that's really what the mystery school was when people show up we don't we don't know how it's going to go we don't know the movies will show we don't know the one-on-ones that will be needed we don't even know the projects or the teams we we don't have anything preset we just know wow we've got 30 days to give to spirit and say spirit you work your miracles you bring to the surface whatever we're ready to see and then this movie is like a glimpse of how it's possible to live it's possible to live in a faithful trusting really clueless way and and be happy In fact, that's the paradox of this world. The more you seem to know about the world and time and space and how it works, the more analytical you are, the more you try to figure it out, the harder it gets. And the more that you surrender and just let go and say show me, show me, lead me, guide me without concerns for outcomes, without concerns for the future, you actually are able to become more and more present. and feel the presence of love when you're not pursuing something in the future 
And that's the way the whole monastery even arrived. It was it, everything's been given everything from the movie to the the characters. It's been the monastery's been going since about 2009. But it's just it's it's really precious. And I know Frances, in her heart, she just had this purpose of just to pray and see what shows up. And thank you for doing that. What a gift you've offered us all of us tonight, just by your heartfelt prayer to just be shown. Yeah. These are roving mics, so if you, Sundari, you have something? jump in but I should really go for it it's kind of deep um, wow um, I, I've had the privilege to see this movie for the for two days ago or something like that and um, it's so mind boggling to me it's as if it's a different movie I mean, for I mean, just just the the experience. It's not like I just saw this movie two days ago. Um, and is this a, is this an HD TV? I'm just curious. I don't. Dawn? No, I, it's no. It's just ridiculously large. I have no idea what it is. Well, okay. So um, just on just just on one level. Uh, on my first telling of it, I mean my first experiencing of it, um, it was uh, I was almost more in the naturey part of it, and it, that felt to me as big as the people part, and, and it was like I was kind of equally in the nature part and the people part, and um, you know that was one, and this time I just fell into the people, and. Believe it or not, it was as if the people had different stories this time. I, I mean, I was seeing them through such different eyes. It, it was like really rich in a different way for me. Um, and that was fascinating how truly rich it was in a completely different way this time than two days ago, as if I'd never seen this movie before. I mean, to that extent of... It was it was just totally different, and I got different things out of it, and um, just on a really really personal level, um, it's um, I sort of had a, an epiphany during it as well. Um, I, it's been like a really a, a very very deep emotional day for me. Um, it's. Uh, it would have been my husband's birthday today if he was alive, and um, workers' comp served me and is pulling away my uh, my coverage for the reason that I left teaching, really. And um, on top of that, I had a concussion in Paris in October, and I, I was trying to work today with this report that came out all wrong in in a way not to support my victimhood and um, and there was some way you know I was talking to you the other day about there's a template I'm working with in my life of um, feeling betrayal and trust things and then I looked below that and it was staying in toxic situations and but then during the movie, just since I've walked in the room here, I saw that it was like a passionate embracing of victimhood. It, it really a deep, deep core of my my being, and that um, it's like I, I somehow believe at some deep level it's the way to get attention and get sympathy and to connect, but it's not, it doesn't work in my, I mean, it doesn't actually work, but there's some, you know, and just somehow 
literally watching the movie. I don't know. It was just like I was just going through this really, really deep process. Um, so thank you. I mean, I don't know what to say, but um, it's... Yeah, it, it's beautiful. Uh, I actually think what this movie shows me is that none of us can mess it up. Like, the spirit knows exactly who to bring into our life, exactly, like you were saying during the day, the things that occur, everything that we need to to be lifted up and to be healed. Like Soren in there, you know, Soren had that infatuation uh, years ago in Denmark, Copenhagen, at this, in the spiritual community, and here it is again, he comes all the way over across the ocean and becomes infatuated with Francis. And the spirit's going to have to use that infatuation to keep him facing what he needs to face. Whatever he ran away from, whatever he tried to avoid, closed down, shut down, you know, hated, hated the woman, hated, just isolated himself. Now it's always the past just keeps coming around and and this time the spirit used the infatuation with Francis, the the amazing singing session with Netta, you, where you could see the shift happening on his face, how he was so, he couldn't sing, I trust at the beginning, she knew it, <laughs> and so she got him singing, I don't trust you, and and boy did his face light up, he, you could even hear his voice, and you could, he, he was mumbling before, but then he started off with that, and then he said, I don't know. Then he started to get into that, but I want to know. And then you saw his face. He was able to sing about the love in the end. And just in that span of, let's say, so many minutes or maybe an hour or two, he went through a shift that he'd been carrying a burden all that time with no way to find through it, just locked in, isolated, feeling ridiculous. Oh, here I go again. I'm ridiculous. I can't say I love you. I can't express my, my love. I'm too timid. So to me, to me, this is really a great testimony that we can't mess it up. The Spirit always is going to find a way to have us break through these, these egoic limitations that we seem to hold on to. And I love how that, in particular, that scene really demonstrated that, that he was so willing I mean, I think the infatuation with you that he felt, that heart opening, Francis, that was, that was you too. He, I don't think he'd have even hung in there. <laughs> he probably would have just left if he hadn't been infatu infatuated with you. So the Spirit even used the infatuation. Everything gets used. Anybody else have a Chris. I'm, I'm glad you didn't listen to all the people that told you all the different ways that you could do it. Uh, I think that there are some things that wouldn't be in there that work really well. And there's all this beautiful cinematography, and then there are other points where, you know, I catch my own ego going like, didn't somebody have a windsock for that microphone? And why are you shooting from that angle? And that light's really glaring. And did you have a silk on the truck? Don't you have a grip? <laughs> But in all of those occasions, <laughs> as it played into the scene, it somehow fit with what was going on. Um, and I really loved how uh, Sundari mentioned the nature, but even that took the same journey as all the people. And, you know, like it starts um, in this beautiful environment, but it seems inhospitable, like there are these odd speeds and there are these jump cuts and, and all of the stuff that's just kind of disconcerting. And then as the people fall, so does the landscape. And, and as they flow, so does the landscape. And then, you know, it, it all comes together and, then, and I just love it too, like how, you know, how subjective art is just like this dream that we are in. And how this film could have been about any one of those people. You could have picked yourself, you could have picked, you know, David, you could have picked, you know, somebody running the camera, and you could have made a film just about them and their experience, you know. Um, and it's what you were saying, how you had all the right people come in, and, uh, 
is which is you know the lesson that I'm learning and like really big this week is is just like why is why is this person here right you know and just asking questions and suddenly it becomes interesting instead of being offended like well why is that happening you know and uh, I, I there's a, there's I'm sure there's a lot more somewhere in there and more will come up but it's uh, it's really beautiful and there's so much bravery um, in, in just the fact that these people would have these vulnerable experiences with a camera there you know and it shows just how you know it seems to me that the crew also had to have that same vulnerability and and even though you know on the surface it may be one person being observed that's not the way it felt it felt like that was a relationship also thank you well, if the movie was uh, an hour and 24 minutes long, I'd probably spend an hour and 10 minutes in analyzing, <laughs> oh, you know, analyzing it. You know. now, what, now, what does that mean? Let's see. Now, oh, yes, okay. Now, now, if I put this in, no. So, actually, what I would like to do, I'd like to see it about three or four more times. I really would. So I could turn all that crap off and just absorb it and just really enjoy it. Uh, Sundari, I can I can well imagine I would have an experience like you had. The second time would be totally different, and the third time, and the fourth time, and the fifth time, <laughs> if I ever got to see it more than once. <laughs> but uh, so it's for a person like me, it was it's it was really difficult for me to let go of all that analytical stuff. But at the end, I finally I felt my heart moving. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, I'm not a total loss. <laughs> yeah, did you like those scenes from Iceland that were in there too? The ice. You know, it's interesting, melting ice for me, because I went through A Course in Miracles, and I remember going through all those chapters, and then at the very end of the, the text, he starts talking about capital self, like our spiritual Christ self versus self-concept and he was like saying salvation is nothing more than the escape from concepts and I'm like huh that's what Buddha said that's what Jesus said. that's what all the mystics and saints say empty your mind and like David was talking about that analytical part that just the critic that's in there and to me you know it's it's always you can see it loosening in there in the characters uh, if you know the backstory on Francis too, you know, raised in Beijing in an atheist family, didn't know about the Beatles. Imagine growing up <laughs> in a in a culture where you don't know who the Beatles are. Uh, you know, that's kind of isolated to what we would say. But also, then here it is: you're doing a movie based on guidance and trust and connection, true, authentic connection with the spirit for your own experience of peace and, and love and happiness. And then it just, I think it gives hope for everybody that in this very complex world where analysis is paralysis, and we all know how when our mind goes into that complexity, it gets really confusing and, and cont contracted and dark, then we, we can have these intuitive experiences that it can be a lot simpler if we listen to our intuition this is kind of a testimony for all of us uh, that if, if you can do that to make a movie, you can do that for with relationships and with with everything. So, yeah, Gia, do you yeah, um, yeah, I had a very surprising um, experience because right in the beginning, before the movie, I mean, when the music came in and there was a scene, my heart started opening up like immediately. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Hasn't started yet. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, here's the tears. <laughs> um, but what, what really surprised me was I was really uh, responding strongly with the narration. Like every time you spoke, I was like, oh. there's this like wave of something mm -hmm. moving through my being. <laughs> I still feel it now. So I don't know 
if it's the it's not just what you said, but it's the the purity behind the message that I really felt. And you know, it's um I'm a purity Nazi. <laughs> he makes uh, Bill makes fun of me all the time. Like you're a purity Nazi, and I I do when I when I feel the purity. It's like that's what I want, you know. Um, and I felt that every time you spoke in third narration, I was like, Whew, there it is again. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was really surprising, and the music really. Uh, really touched me. The music was beautiful. Like JP did a great job. <laughs> um, but yeah, the individual stories were amazing. But for some reason, the thing that stood out was the narration, the music, and the whole feel of the entire movie was like a, a journey that, um, a journey to the light, really. So, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just feeling a lot right now. Um, but there was a funny scene. I mean, I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, when, I forgot his name, the guy from P- Copenhagen. Sir? Yeah, when he finally, like, expressed the thing he was, he's been sitting on the entire time. And Jason was sitting next to him. Mm-hmm. And when he said, I was, like, infatuated with you. And Jason was like, <laughs> I could see his face like it was, it was such a shock but it was like because he kept it so tightly that you would never guess so it makes me wonder like you know each one of us what other feelings or emotions or things are we're keeping inside of it so deep that we have no idea what it is mm-hmm. let alone the world yeah so it's uh, I think it's a masterpiece so thank you so much <laughs> thank you yeah I mean um, that's, that's you, you touched on something about we have no idea what is underneath the unconscious mind and what is to be healed but because when I was editing all this footage, I saw so much. And, you know, like you said, a lot of the footage are unusable because of the sound and we didn't put the equipment together quick enough. So, But I got to watch everybody's prayer from the beginning. And I know how it turned out, and I was amazed. Soren was praying for transparency, to learn to be transparent. That's his initial prayer. And Frances, in the kitchen, her prayer was wanting to let go of this self-concept of being a good cook because it was too painful to carry that. But everybody, after the prayer, they forgot. And then the journey just unfold, unfold on its own. And then here I, I was, they were sitting in the editing room, watch the beginning, and I thought everybody's prayer was answered. You know, that's an amazing journey the Spirit has for us. Uh, thank you for, for making the movie. It... Um, you know, it was, it's, um, so for me, it was an experience of, of what is truly valuable. That's what came through to me. And it seems that there was a part there where, um, I don't know who, who it was that was doing the, the opera. Emily. 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 Yes. <laughs> and, um, and that, that was so incredible because, Part of my mind kept thinking, "Oh my goodness, she could be, <laughs> she could be singing somewhere on a stage. She, you know, her voice is so beautiful." But, but she wasn't. She was like right there in the in nature, in a simple setting, and 
it, it was so holy. <laughs> That's the only word that I can think of because because that's not how we tend to um, look at our gifts and what we bring to the world. We tend to want to put them out there to be um, praised and uh, idolized. And, and I feel that what, what this movie is showing us is that what we've been given can be used and it doesn't have to be... Um, It doesn't have to come through in that um, <laughs> worldly greatness fashion. And, and that's what I feel that came through. It's through the simplicity of it. I, I feel like that it can, it can reach um, people's heart where they recognize what's truly valuable. And it's this journey of healing. And that's what the purpose of us being here is. So, thank you. Thank you, that's beautiful. Oh, Eloisa. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? That's like the prayer of the heart. How do we go from idols to purity? Like the purity that Gia was mentioning, and it's, it seems like it, it's just one tweak in our mind where we start to see Everything is a mirror for for our own lesson, and everything is an opportunity for giving and extending, not forgetting. In a world of consumption, in a world of achievement, in a world of getting, it's all self-concept. The ego has made up a menagerie of, here, try to chase after this cheese for a while, and you know, it doesn't matter if you get stressed and tired. That's just part of it all. That's part of the game. And then now we're, we're just saying, no, I want to give. I want to love. I want to extend. I want to know simplicity instead of complexity. I want to feel integrity and honesty and safety and true inner security, not chase after pipe dreams that really don't lead anywhere at all. And I'm glad you brought up Emily because she's, she's a great example, as so many are, that have amazing skills as the world would evaluate them. And they're, they're into peace of mind, you know. They're not into achievement, fame, uh, recognition, personal recognition. You know, it's, a, it's like a new generation, a wave of witnesses to what's really valuable, what's really important which is in our hearts, not, not in a, achieving something in the world. It's just beautiful. And even with this particular song, um, to be able to include that in the movie requires the copyright from the, the composer who actually wrote this song for a movie called The Mission, and he, won, he actually won an Oscar for this piece. And he was so famous in the you know, as a composer and musician, Sarah Bradman actually wrote to him to 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 put uh, lyrics for this piece. And for five years, he said no. And finally, um, I think they did have the collaboration, that's the, the lyrics, about um, a world that is, there is no suffering. And uh, so when, when Emily wrote to the recording company to ask for the copyright, Sony just said, good luck, because this, this composer is famous for saying no. So Emily wrote like a letter to him about her journey as opera singer and what we use this for, and we got the permission in 24 hours. Oh my Gabriel's oboe. Gabriel's oboe. That's the name. That's the name of the instrumental version, and the the one with the lyrics is called uh, Nella Fantasia. It's an Italian name. And who was the composer? Uh, Mar Maricone. Yeah. It was it was Emily's transparency in writing this beautiful email, mm -hmm. requesting the copyright. I think that that was even 
an expression of the way the whole movie was made and the way that the mystery school was and the way we live our life. It's amazing to think that if you're, if you're transparent, uh, or like G was saying, just pure, if you just stay vibrating in that purity of what's real, what's most important to you, that everything that you seem to need will come to you effortlessly. Because your, your mind and your soul is so important, and that light is so important to be extended, that whether it's copyright, whether it's uh, booms or you know, <laughs> cameras or, or directors or cinematographers, everything comes just from that prayer of the heart to know who you really are, to know the purity of who you are. And it doesn't come from ego pursuits. It's like the ego pursuits are actually the blocking of it. I know there have been spiritualities over the years that try to talk about balance, and but you don't balance a call to awaken, to know who you are with a death wish. If you try to mix the death wish in, you try to bring that analysis, that, that striving and struggling, and you try to put that together with the humbleness, like of St. Francis, the humbleness of, of Teresa in there, she's seeing snow for the first time, and she's running down like a little girl, gleefully looking up at the snow, and then she finally just eases back and just, ah, uh, total surrender, like, oh my God, it's so perfect. You can't mix that with the ego. And that's what we're learning. That that's why we have to be so intuitively guided. You can't mix the ego's world with the the holy instant. You have to desire the holy instant above all else and that let everything come. And to me that's what's been great about this monastery. The monastery was was donated and Everything along the way, as we've kept the purity, the integrity, the devotion to peace of mind, to staying with forgiveness, everything, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else shall be added. It's really true. It can be that easy, but you really have to have that faith and you have to value your peace of mind more than the complexities and the distractions of this world. This movie really, really shows it kind of in a real visceral way <laughs> with every showing. <laughs> Hello. Christian. <laughs> hey, hey everybody. Um, yeah, so my name is Christian and I met Frances in February 2017 and then she kind of like in April 2017 started like filming, right? So it's interesting to see now um, like the result of it and everything. You know, I knew some of the people who were involved in it and met met the people how you know, like before they married and things like that. So it's like interesting knowing these people and like, uh, being in this documentary. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was very, very beautiful. You know, so so well captured, so authentic. And uh, when I when I was traveling in India uh, in 2016, I wrote in my journal one day, uh, "Rawness holds truth." rawness like raw like a raw piece of meat or something um and i thought it's so beautiful because everything that is unnecessary is left out you know and that comes out so well in this documentary you know i'm really happy you did it you know it's incredible how you did it and for me is uh it was a big reminder to uh, trust um, a very big word and a nebulous word for me because um, I tend to be very analytical and I 2017 was also when I met Francis was when I met my now wife which is Maria 
and um, we ended up marrying as well uh, in May. So that was funny, the synchronicity. And now we have a little child, um, and he's 16 months old. And for me, like being kind of like a young dad was a big journey in trust and like uh, facing the fear of like, okay, what does it look like providing? Like I was barely able to provide for myself. You know, how do I provide for a family? Um, um, not that I, I guess, have to, but I don't know. It's, I guess, a little bit part of being a man, is it? Do you have to? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Self-concepts. Um, st- still analyzing that one. So, yeah, I don't know. It was just beautiful. And uh, Maria, for me, was always, or still is, a big symbol of trust, you know. And um, she was always like, ah, it's, it's going to work out. Don't worry. It'll be fine. I'm like, how is this going to work out? How in the world is this going to work out? Um, and she said, ah, don't worry, just trust. And, um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it did work out. You know, I still, like, haven't spent a day where I didn't have a meal or have to, had to sleep under the bridge, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, amazing. So just, you know, that movie brought back to me again that concept of trust, you know, and trusting more again because I felt I've, like, went back a little bit, like, more to the world. You know, like having a baby, I'm like, oh no, I gotta get, you know, make money and you know, be in the world and you know, do all these kinds of things. So, um, nice to see that movie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of times, people see the movie too, and they go, "Where are they now?" Because, uh, <laughs> like uh, Jeffrey and Susanna came together in uh, Mexico and. And then decided to to become engaged and everything. But actually, Christian and Maria will be coming your way, and and Susanna and Jeffrey will be coming to L.A. So it's like meet the characters. Where are where are you now? Yes, they're, they're still married, still facing opening, expanding hearts. You know, uh, kind of like Richard Linkletter likes to like follow different characters over generations just to see what is what is going on for the benefit of everyone and uh, that's the beautiful thing of this is that it just takes a, a lot of willingness and commitment I think is the, the word, a lot of commitment underneath everything we do. We don't even realize how much commitment we have underneath to to really hang in there with this and, and hang in there with the healing. So that'll be a nice facet of, of traveling with this movie and having some of the uh, the characters show up in Europe and California and different places. So you can talk to them and say, wow, that was seen there. <laughs> it kind of makes it interesting. Are there copies of this film available? I would love to give it to so many people. <laughs> well, um, just last month we actually um, submitted this to Sundance. We we don't know whether it will be a festival movie, but we have submitted to a few festivals. Um, so according to their requirements, we cannot release it publicly until until the the festivals. So right now, I think for the rest of this year and even. Um, a bit of next year, the first half, we probably can only do this kind of uh, private showing. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. Find out as soon as yeah. Please, you know, uh, grab a card and, uh, you know, just uh, join our mailing list. We'll keep everybody informed when the movie is going to different areas and um, will be available. Yeah, these these are like such cozy wonderful little almost like focus groups where we feel like the spirit will release it in a broader way but we're just enjoying and savoring all of you and savoring every moment of it because it seems like with everything the spirit has its own timing with with things too and with the festivals and everything that's so beautiful and so it's like we're just savoring the moment <laughs> savoring right right now
time? It's 9.22. We still have eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll share that. <laughs> I just want to say I really loved the the breath in the movie. Like, I could really feel the presence and the breath, and it really helped me to really feel the movie. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that, that just seemed miraculous because... Um, it like provided this the exact space I needed to embrace the emotions, and I cried many times during this movie tonight. So it was just beautiful. So I just wanted to say that I really felt that space, which it, it's like it invited me in to really be there with my emotions as I took the journey. And then the other thing I really appreciate, I, I, everybody in the movie. Um, Kind of, I, you know, and they're, they're they're honest sharing. But I love also another thing I love is uh, metaphor and symbolism, and that was beautifully like interwoven with the nature and like, yeah, when people needed to flow, like the river, the river was there, and it was just, I don't know, it just touched me so deep that kind of bridge of people's honesty, that breath in the movie, and then that beautiful use of metaphor to like just take me even higher so i just wanted to to mention that that was real meaningful to me yeah thank you francis you know for me i um the entire film was about like the breath like you were saying it was about the relaxation of just releasing in the body of everything that's stored because normally in a in a movie when that would start out the way that it did not with the beautiful scenery but when people came into into the movie there in most media there would be drama and the drama would start to unfold and there would be tension in that drama and by the end of the movie that tension would be released and this wasn't it there was you never made the choice of going in any drama. It was like the entire thing was just a, I don't know, like relaxing into being. And the other aspect that was really powerful for me, I mean, there was a lot there, but uh, it's when, especially during those vocal sessions, when that which needed to be expressed got to be expressed, the opening was profound and um, and it was more profound in the vocal session than in the expression sessions and uh, yeah it was just beautiful yeah thank you well here's just Soren and his expression session that was just beautiful and true and just wrapped around me and Wow. It was and the animals, the chipmunks and the horse, the horse after Linda was going to leave and then we're left with the horse. You know, it was just charming and lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I got to listen to um your talk last Thursday from when you were at the conference in the UK and I was just really struck by you sharing about how like the deepest part of it for you was just getting to see over and over and over again how loved you were (laughs) because you were in this position of needing all day, every day, like help, a lot of help, (laughs) which a lot of us when we're in our comfort zones or whatever, we don't feel like we need it, but we always do anyway. But it was so obvious in that experience for you that it's like, oh, shit, I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) So you got me? And to see over and over and over again how got you were and how scooped up you were, it was just, yeah, it was really beautiful to hear you talk about that. And I can only imagine just how profound that was, seeing over and over and over, Spirit just wanting to show you, like, I got you, I still got you, and I still got you, and I still got you, and I love you so much. And thank you for taking such a beautiful risk. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. You know, 
because I was I remember when I was sitting in the um, final uh, post production do the color grading and the the guy who did the color grading they they were so experienced in the post they can spot all the mistakes you have made during the shooting and the pre-production and he was saying how how many mistakes he, he went for hours like this camera setting is completely wrong this is this, this, this. and i was listening for hours and hours and i was like i am still here that is like the, this leaping joy that I cannot mess it up <laughs> after everything went so wrong in the professional's <laughs> eyes that was like thank god I, I would never worry about making a mistake anymore because you can't make a mistake and then I was afterwards and I was like but Jesus I did pray why didn't you tell me <laughs> to do that and then and then I then the, yeah spirit just like but look at all the rich experiences and the relationships that unfold and that is the goal that's where the guidance is for the guidance is never meant for things to be efficient mm-hmm. uh, produced mm-hmm. but focus on how much love you have experienced in that and that's that's what I'm guiding you to so and here stood the wrong Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> right, really. The wrong right, Raphael. <laughs> I just have a question of who sang, was this, uh, ex- in the music sessions, the, that woman, was it her voice we heard yes. at the end? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's Nada. Yeah. Nada's. Nada Bowen. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah, with that theme, you can't mess it up. Because, Mike, you were sharing how you've been just singing songs at your course groups, and you can you can miss notes and mess lyrics up and everything, and you're so just wonderful. noticing that it doesn't really matter. Everybody's feeling the love, and it's that thing of, like, if our purpose underneath is pure, then what the professionals may even judge as the mistakes, they aren't really mistakes, because of the intention, the purpose underneath is determines everything, and I think that was great with this. And then with the music, you can you can relax. Then you're not trying to oh my self doubt, self consciousness. I missed a oh I missed a no I forgot a lyric. Some of the best times we've seen is when somebody forgets the lyrics, and then they're so transparent. Or the time I'll never forget the strawberry fields we had with Eric here. Eric's got so many great songs and everything, and he got up on the stage and he decided to meditate at a music festival with the whole crowd there. And I was on the side cheering him on, like, you go for it! And he'd, like, he'd get his guitar and everyone would get like, yeah, Eric, they try and call him out their favorite songs and they're waiting. It'd be like going to the Beatles or the Bee Gees and then nothing but meditation. I don't know how long you were on that stage before he even played a note or sang. And I was just cheering him on because that took a lot of, of faith. Uh, because in that context, there seems to be the expectation that you're going to sing. And when, and when you don't, he would just smile and just, nah, he'd get ready. Nah, I'm not feeling yet. You know, oh! <laughs> but... But that's, that's the difference for doing it for the purpose of, of healing as opposed to a performance where there's money involved and there's other motives that are there other than healing. Because if, if you have other egoic motives, then the healing gets pushed down the priority list and it has to wait until you put it up back at the top of the priority list. And so you can feel it. You know, you can feel it. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, Francis. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming.